I've prepared a brief tutorial on the creation of two separate Dash apps with DBRX. So in the next uh, 10 minutes or so, I'm going to walk you through these two apps and show you their respective code. The first app is a simple chat app with Dash serving as a front end interface and DBRX large language model uh, serving as, as a large language model, actually. So let me share my screen. Oh, thank you, Teresa, for the screen. Uh, and here you, you see we have our simple app. Again, it's simple on purpose because I want to show you how to incorporate the DBRX large language model into Dash. So in this case, we just have a title, a subtitle, type your question to activate the large language model, and we'll type here, I copy pasted, what's the difference between uh, Plotly and Dash? Question mark, enter, that's activating the callback, which has a large language model, and it should give us a nice uh, answer of a paragraph. And here it's cut off. And you'll see why it's cut off, actually. I did max tokens of, I think, 256 tokens. I don't, I didn't want to overuse this large language model just, just for the demo. But if you don't restrict it, you'll get two, three, four paragraphs. All right. Now let's look in, uh, let's look in the code. So this is our code. What is it, about 55 uh, um, uh, uh, lines of, of code? And uh, let me give you a brief overview of what's, what we're seeing here. All right, so first we have our uh, libraries that we need to import. Then what we're doing is we're going to incorporate the .env file that has our Databricks token. So we're gonna look for the, uh, the path to the .env file. We're gonna load the file, and then we're gonna get the token that's in there. And simply, I'm not gonna show you the, the .env file because my <laughs> I don't wanna show you my Databricks token, but uh, in essence, this is what is inside. Let me see if I can zoom in so you can see it better. This is what's inside the, um, the .env file. It says that Databricks underscore token, all uh, capital letters, and then in between quotation marks is just the token itself, right? And then we're going to use um, OpenAI that we import it right here, right? To access our large language model or our client. And OpenAI has two properties, the API key and the base URL. The API key is where we're going to assign the Databricks uh, token that we have. And, the, and then you have to assign your serving endpoint, your Databricks serving endpoint to the base underscore URL. All right, so we have our client and now uh, we're gonna go into the two main building blocks of Dash, which is the layout, and the callback. And inside the layout is really what we want to see on the page, right? So if we go to the back to our page, we will see that we have a simple uh, title, like a subtitle and an empty, an empty input box that is going to listen to the question by the user. If we go back to our code, we'll see exactly that. We have our DCC, we're going, I'm using here DCC markdown, using this hashtag uh, to uh, in Markdown language, that is uh, HTML, H1, that's a, a main header. So that's why you see this title is a lot bigger, the font. And then a subtitle, we'll use like a label, call it. And then we have like a, line, a break in line. And then our input, the dash input component, uh, which is expecting text. And debounce true means that um, I, I use this instead of using a button. So anytime I click outside of the, of the input, box or, or click enter is going to activate uh, the input. It's gonna, it's gonna listen to uh, whatever that text is inside the input. And then we have an empty div, the children. This is an empty children. Here is where we are going to uh, display the response. This response is going to be displayed right here in the children. All right, so let's go into the callback. Now the callback is where all the magic happens if you know a little bit about Dash. This is where we create the interactivity between the components on our uh, in our dash app or in the layout usually so here i'm just going to take the value of this component this component if you recall is right here is uh, uh the dcc input so i'm going to take the value meaning whatever the user put inside here this string i want to take this string i'll call it input underscore value that's the variable and i'm going to say if the screen uh, there's nothing in that string then just return no update like don't do anything because there's nothing there. However, if there is something there else, we're gonna activate the client and we're gonna use the completion method. 
and we're going to create the message, right? And the message is going to be the system. This is kind of like the prompt. Very, very, can't get any simpler than that. You're an AI assistant. That's it, nothing fancy. And the person, uh, the user, is going to um, um, uh, have this, this, this text or this string as the content, right? It's gonna be the content of the, of the client, the input value that we grab from here, right? Which is the text for the DCC input. We're going to assign the Databricks instruct uh, model. This is a DBRX model. We'll assign it to the model property and max token 256. I just put 256 because I didn't want to use too many tokens, but if I would have, I don't know, put out 500 or more than that, then it would not have cut off here. It would have continued. All right, so now that we have our chat completion, activating using the DBRX model, I'm gonna print, print it out here. We'll see the response here, just because I wanted to see it in my terminal. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna extract the response because the response is inside, you see it's inside the list, it's inside, where is it right here? Here, for example, the previous choices, the first item in the list right here, and then the content. So I'm just retrieving the, the final response, the final string which is which is right here, right? Like that. So now that I have my response, I'm going to assign it to the children property of this div. So in essence, I'm putting the response in here. And since I'm putting the assigning the response to the children, that is how I actually see the response on the page right here. Wonderful. Now I did go through a lot. So if you do have any questions about this app, about the, the model, please use the chat box uh, and write down your questions. Okay, so um, the second app is gonna be a bit more sophisticated uh, that I'm gonna show you right now. And it uses RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation, for augmenting large language model knowledge with additional documents. This app will take one document or web page and try to answer the user's questions based solely on that web page or document. Let's see an example. And here we have our summarized document and then the question of the user. So let's go to the code and let's go to the second app right here. And I've prepared just a question, so I don't have to type it all out. First of all, let's use, uh, let's use a Wikipedia page, this one right here. It's a Wikipedia page about Paris. All right, so here's our Wikipedia page. And then the question is going to be a simple question about, here we go. What was Paris architecture like in the 19th uh, century? Now the answer, submit, is gonna come directly from the Wikipedia page. The large language model might know, probably knows this model because DBRX large language model is very powerful and it was trained on a lot of data out there in the world, but the answer is specifically gonna come from this Wikipedia page, right? I'm gonna show one last example. This is just a regular page. I can also put in there a PDF. I'm gonna get this PDF right here about, I think it's a manual about a Samsung uh, TV. Put this PDF here. And the question that is going to be specifically from that manual is going to be, how can I fix my remote control? Okay, I, got, I have the Samsung TV, my remote control broke, and I don't want to read the whole document, search for the section about the remote control, how to fix it. So I'm just going to feed it into the Dash large language model app so it can tell me exactly using RAG, it can tell me exactly what I should do according to the manual if my remote control broke. Right, check the batteries. Hopefully, <laughs> you've done that. Uh, pair the remote to the TV, and so on, and so on, and so on. So it's kind of cool that it can really summarize long documents or PDFs or web uh, web uh, uh, links um, to extract the information, the specific information that you're interested in. So let's look at an example uh, at the code actually, and how we're we're actually doing this. So first, we're importing all the libraries that we need for this app. Again, we're going to uh, incorporate the .env file where we have not only the Databricks token like last time, but we're also going to add my OpenAI API key that I got from OpenAI like this, OpenAI key. This is in the .env file um, because we're going to need this for embedding 
the documents into our large language model, right? For the embedding process. So we have our two tokens. Here, instead of using OpenAI, where is it? A module, we're gonna use this. We're gonna use the chat OpenAI from Langchain. We're gonna use this. And the properties here are slightly different. Uh, instead of saying API key, it's going to be model underscore, uh, sorry, open AP, open AI underscore API underscore key. Here's where we'll assign the Databricks token. Here's where we'll assign the serving endpoint of my Databricks uh, like workspace. And this is the model name. Here directly I assign the DBRX uh, model to the model name. So we have our large language model. Now I'm gonna prepare the prompt. Again, a pretty simple prompt. Answer the following questions based only on the provided context. And the provided context is going to be the document or the PDF that I provided this dash app. And the input, right, the question, the following question will be um, recorded as an input variable. So we're gonna to have to assign the input uh, or the question to this input variable later uh, in the callback. We're gonna create the um, documents chain that we imported using the large, combining the large language model and the prompt. And then we have the two building blocks of Dash, the layout and the callback. So the layout is fairly simple. Again, we're using the uh, Dash Mantine or Mantine components here, the container. We have a title and two text input boxes. Remember the title right here and two text input boxes. This one and this one. This will be input one and this will be input two. That's how I'm going to call them. Input one oops, and input two, right? And then we have the button right underneath. And in between them, we have our DCC loading, our HTML div here, specifically in the children, children, we are going to assign the response. Here's where we're going to see the response right here. And it's wrapped by DCC loading. So that's what activates the spinner. When I hit the button and say submit, while the large language model is thinking and coming back with a response, you saw this spinner here, right? To show the, the user that it's thinking and the app is not broken, All right? And finally, we have the callback, right? We have our callback here where all the magic happens. Move this a little bit down. And in this callback, we have three input arguments. We have the end clicks, which will record the, the, the button that's being clicked. And this will activate the callback. This is an actual input that will activate the callback function and execute it. These other inputs are called states. They're just listening, but if they change, the callback is still not activated. It's only activated when the button is clicked. So we have the value of input one. Remember the value of the first box or the first text input. And then we have the value or the string of the second text input, which is, this is input one, like usually the web document, and this will be input two, the question that, that the user asks. So now that we have everything, the, the callback is activated when I click the button, and we're gonna use regular expression just to check if this link that the user inserted in input one actually ends with a .pdf. And if it does, then we know it's a PDF file or PDF link. We're gonna use PI PDF loader to load that. Um, and then using load and split. And if it's not a PDF, then it's probably just a regular website, web page, like the Wikipedia web page. We'll use the web-based loader to load this document. Then I'm not gonna go over every single line of code here, but this usually you would just repeat in, in a RAG process, in a simple RAG process. We're gonna use the OpenAI API key for the uh, embedding uh, process. And then we're gonna create our vector. And remember a vector is just an array of numbers. It's it's an array of numbers that represents information of from text or images or pictures, videos that a computer and a large language model can actually read, right? And then cluster if need be. So we're going to incorporate, we're going to combine these two, the retriever and the document chain that we had here above. Remember when we chain the large language model and the prompt. We combine them into this retrieval chain. And now that we have everything ready, we're going to invoke it. And we're going to assign, remember this input variable, this represents our question, the user question inside the prompt. So we're going to assign to this input variable the input number two, which is the input from the, uh, from the question, the second box, right? The question of the user. In our example, how do we fix my remote control? 
And then we're going to grab the response, which is the answer uh, item inside this response list. And we're going to return all of this, right? This is how we display the response on the page. We return it to the children property of this component. Now this component is our div right here. So let's return it right here into the children. This is how dynamically um, the Dash app and the callback uh, creates and updates um, your app, right? With, with the response of the large language.